Today I wanted to give a short introduction to GT's Isaac Kidd Copper Refining Group, who we are and what makes us different. I would also like to briefly explain the importance of efficiency in copper refining and perhaps uh, suggest a different way of thinking about efficiencies and how to measure it. And that'll lead into why we think capital equipment becomes such a critical choice affecting efficiencies long term. It'll only be a short overview, leaving plenty of time to cross to Noel Kimmer at the copper refineries in Townsville for a look at a real operation. Isaac Kidd Group, who we are. It's a combination of the ISA Process Group from Townsville and the Kidd Process Group from Kidd Creek, uh, originally developed by, by Falcon Bridge many years ago. We've taken the combined experience uh, in operating and design and produced the Isaac Kidd Group. We manufacture stainless steel cathodes and provide design, design reviews, operational audits and packaged equipment supply focusing specifically around the electrode handling the systems which we think are critical to the operations. I'd like to talk a bit about how we work. It's been touched on by others today and I would like to emphasise again that our technology transfer model is different. And it's different because we are operators. Yes, we provide core process design and base, at basic engineering le level. Yes, we, provi we provide key equipment, similar to other METS companies. But it's at the time of detailed design review where we start to, uh, to present a different perspective. And that is because we're attending the design review meetings with a view of operating experience and the perspective of operators. We're considering what is safe, what will give an easy operation for both maintenance and operating personnel. The other uh, unique factor that I think is worth noting is that we have the ability to provide intensive process and, op and maintenance training towards the end of the construction phase before the commissioning starts. This is usually done at our refinery in Townsville, which uh, because we have our own operating plants, means that we can fully immerse the trainees into our standard procedures, processes, and they get a close and first-hand experience on how to operate and maintain the ISA KID copper refinery. Lastly, how we work differently is we maintain an, an ongoing relationship with clients after they commission. We visit regularly, we have robust technical discussions, to develop long-term relationships with our, with our users. I thought it worthwhile talking about efficiency and, and stating what's probably quite an obvious um, goal in a copper refinery, but it's worth noting that everything we're doing has the, the main goal of producing a high-quality cathode copper product. And when we do this, we'd like to use an optimum amount of power and time to achieve the, the high quality result. It's very simple, but if it's done properly, then we can produce good quality cathode bundles like you can see in the, in the slide from our uh, uh, refinery in Townsville. I also wanted to uh, take a quick look back in history and, and consider where we've come from uh, in the copper refining uh, systems. Today the benchmark system recognised worldwide is the use of stainless steel reusable cathode blanks or permanent cathode technology. It was developed uh, at Townsville 40 years ago and then approximately 30 years ago uh, it was um, presented worldwide and, and shown a rapid, rapid uptake by other users. Both greenfields and brownfield sites. Um, the latest brownfield example was Mufalira refinery in Zambia. There are numerous efficiency benefits which have been well documented and published in many different forums. Uh, I'd just like to make clear mention that the stainless steel cathodes allow operating at high current density 
at higher current efficiency, giving higher productivity per cell installed in the refinery. They also allow a higher quality product because there's less risk of inclusion of slimes or entrapment of electrolyte into the cathode copper products. Now, the common industry uh, description of efficiency is around the efficiency of the, of the current um, input into the cells or the time taken for harvesting. But why don't we consider from a different perspective? Let's consider the uh, efficiency in a refinery in terms of the in-cell current distributions. And if we consider it in this way, we'll see that um, current distribution is really the heart of, of producing high quality and high efficiency. In, in any refinery, there are several hundred uh, cells connected in series, and each cell could contain 40, 50, 60 pairs of anodes and cathodes. And if we can get through good process control, good operating practice, and good uh, selection of capital equipment, every anode and cathode seeing the same DC current, then we will for sure produce high quality and high efficiency. And a good example of that is shown in the histogram on the slide. We measure the current being carried by each cathode in the cell. We plot the cumulative distributions, and we are targeting a, a, a relative standard deviation away from the theoretical average current of less than 10%. That's what's being shown in this graph here, uh, which is a, uh, a real-life example from an ISA refinery operating at a nominal 350 amps per square metre, which is a very high intensity. We've noted several key control factors there around operating practices. Operating practices, metallurgical control uh, are all key factors and very important. But in addition, and just as critical, is the selection of the core capital equipment that must be suitable in design and be reliable in its performance. And I'm talking specifically about the cathode plates and the electrode handling systems. These play such an important part in producing uniform current distribution within every cell and thereby efficiencies. So I'd like to touch quickly on the, uh, the cathode plates and why they're important. It seems obvious that they're a, a, a critical capital item because they're a, a very large capital investment, probably the largest capital investment in the, in the refinery, and they can have a significant impact on tank house operational efficiency. Each cathode plate in itself is a very simple um, piece of equipment. It contains a, a hanger bar which is designed to support the, the blade uh, sitting in the cell and to carry the current from the intermediate bar into the, the cathode plate. The blade of one square metre or, or larger where the, the cathode is uh, deposited onto and the, the plastic edge strips or borders on the sides uh, to mask the current on the sides of the the cathode plate. So a strong, robust cathode plate will give a, a long-term uh, higher efficiency in the, ref in the refinery. And, and selection of the best or the most suitable design will reduce operational risk long-term. I'll talk about two features quickly, the hanger bars and the blades. There are, there are many alternative hanger bar types and this won't be the forum to uh, provide an in-depth discussion on the evolution of hanger bar designs over time but I would like to make the point that we understand very clearly the different characteristics of the various hanger bar designs and their effect on efficiency both in the short and long term. I would like to uh, discuss two new innovations developed by our Isaacid group. Firstly, the Isaacid hanger bar. We recognised uh, in, in operations that alternative designs can have failures around the joints where a galvanic couple can exist between the stainless steel and the copper, or simply corrosion can occur at the joint due to acid mist or acid salts being present. 
to combat these problems, we developed a non-corroding steel weld between the copper contact and the stainless steel tube. We think this is the highest corrosion resistant hangar bar available and suitable for very aggressive environments such as in electrowinning plants where the cathode plates are installed underneath the ventilation hoods. The other core part of our design for this Isaac Hit hangar bar is that we wanted to maintain the high mechanical strength that we had in our original ISA plates. So we're continuing to use a, a, a stainless steel tube or RHS section to uh, support the blade and it's a stainless steel weld from the blade to the hangar bar for also good mechanical strength. I would make the point that this is only a, a fairly new design, we've only got a few thousand in operation but we will be uh, shortly starting more demonstrations in the coming months. The second uh, design which is even newer uh, is what we're calling a steer horn hangar bar design which we are using either with our HP solid copper hangar bar with a stainless steel sheath or using the eyes of kid bar I just described but bent into a steer horn shape. We continue to look for efficiency improvements in our designs and we see this as a, another step forward in, in minimising the consumption of power by the stainless steel cathode plate. This is a design that is in trial phase and we have successfully uh, trialled in an electrowinning plant in Chile and in our own refinery in Townsville. The, the, the trials have demonstrated a uh, drop in voltage in the plate, thereby uh, showing a significant saving in power consumption compared to the existing plates. And we've also demonstrated that they can be fully compatible with existing equipment such as the cells, the stripping machines, the cranes, and we've also uh, been able to use them with shorting frames. So they can be retrofitted into existing plants. We also expect to demonstrate maintenance savings with the stronger hangar bars compared to other designs. They are fully available for trial uh, in any operations going forward. I'd like to take a short moment to discuss the blade of the stainless steel cathode plates. Again, uh, you might consider the heart of the cathode plate is the blade, which is subject to significant mechanical stresses in its life. Every five to ten days it is harvested in the machines where it is flexed and the copper is removed. And again, we'd like to recognise that there's alternative steel blade materials. Most common is the standard 316 uh, L materials, but we have developed since um, more than 20 years ago with, our, uh, with our mill in Sweden our unique uh, specification for 316, which has, has superior mechanical properties to standard grade. And since 2007, we introduced into the market our uh, LDX material, which has even greater mechanical properties, giving us uh, better protection against the adverse handling and overflexing that can occur in stripping machines in, in real operating environments. Since uh, 2007, there's been more than 300,000 LDX cathode plates installed, predominantly in African and one South American electrowinning operation, and we are using them in our own copper refineries inside Glencore. Now I'd like to introduce our refinery in Townsville. It's a um, plant where I've been uh, privileged to work for the last 20 years. And it's nominally 300,000 tonne capacity uh, electro, uh, copper refinery. We operate typically 320 to 330 amps per square metre. We have 1,162 cells in operation and we are achieving greater than 95 or 96 percent efficiencies. We did a major modernisation in 1997 whereby we replaced almost all of the core equipment in the, in the refinery. It's been a success and we are continuing to, to operate today uh, at good, good productivities. 
I would now like to transfer over to Noel Kimlin. Uh, Noel has uh, been working in the refinery for more than 30 years. Uh, he would be uh, an expert in anyone's um, uh, experience in the cranes and stripping machines at the refinery and has been involved in many site commissionings and the development of the ISA process, KID process, electrode handling systems. Over to you, Noel. Welcome everybody. We're here this evening in CRL's Townsville Refinery located in Australia. Uh, this refinery is a great example of a refinery using Isaac Kid technology, the plates and handling equipment. And why wouldn't it be? This is the birthplace of Isaac process. So in the mid 70s, the stainless steel technology was developed here uh, with the conversion of the refinery taking place in 1978. We're now standing roughly in the middle of the refinery and you can see the plates behind me here in operation. Uh, so really, this is a real world situation, real world refinery. I'd like to take you just up here now. This section behind me was harvested uh, earlier today. So we will only see around about six to eight hours production of copper. It may be hard to see because it is now uh, approaching midnight here. You can see the copper growth beginning on the cathode. So now let's look as we winch a traditional 316L cathode plate from the cell. You can now see the copper deposit forming. Again, this is only approximately six hours growth. I don't quite know whether it's better with or without the uh, torch and certainly not with a flashing light. We can see the even growth. This is the traditional Isaac Kid plate with the 316L premium Nibby steel blade stainless steel hanger bar with copper coating. At this point, the 316L steel is coming, as Graham said, from our Nibby mill or the Nibby mill in Sweden. Uh, the average operating age of the cathode plates in this building, and there's just over 51,000 of them at the moment, the average operating age is in excess of 20 years and they are still performing well, as you can see here. So for us, that is a key point. The strength of the plates is their value, their strength, their robust design, and the efficiency. The high average life of the plates in this building, as we just said, shows that when they are handled with quality cranes and quality handling equipment, they can return a really good, or sorry, have a really good return on capital investment. An example of good anode handling equipment or is behind me here. The automated Kunz cranes that are used in the Townsville refinery have been in operation here now for in excess of 20 years. They provide reliable operation with electrode placement to plus or minus two millimeters in the cell. If we move to the end of the section here, we will get a good view of electrode placement. At this point, we are looking down the section that was harvested today. These electrodes are placed directly with the automated Kunz crane as shown behind us here. Again, it's real world situation. This is an operating refinery. This refinery is also where GT and I as a kid carry out our test work and trials for the continual development and improvement of the I as a kid cathode plates. As we move down here, we have a few examples of Isaac Kid cathode plates. 
the Isaac Kid Technology Group strength is the ability to offer design, cathode plate material type that is suitable for the client. That's based on basically our 40 years operating experience and our knowledge of the industry. The first cathode plate we have on display here is a traditional eyes a kid plate, 316L premium nibby steel blade, the solid stainless steel hanger bar with the copper electroplating over the top to give the plate good efficiency and good performance. This plate is fitted with ABS cross-slotted edge strips. We move on to the second plate here. This plate is fitted with the latest design, Eyes a Kid hanger bar. It is fitted to a 316L premium nibby steel blade. The new Eyes a Kid hanger bar consists of a low resistance copper core that is completely sheathed with a stainless steel housing. The only part of the copper core that is exposed is in the contact area here. In that contact area, it is fully seal welded with GT's patented welding process. I have an example here that you can see possibly a bit better because in the evening you can see the copper contact area. You can now clearly see the patented seal welding process that completely seals the hanger bar, preventing electrolyte ingress and obviously preventing premature failure of the hanger bar. The third plate here is again fitted. It's the latest Isaac Kid hanger bar, so it's exactly the same design as this, but this time it is fitted to an LDX blade. The LDX blade gives a uh, much higher corrosion resistance, particularly for plants with high chlorides or chloride issues. It also has a higher yield strength than the 316L. This plate is fitted with uh, polypropylene hinge type edge strips and you can see the different size just indicating that GT offers plates to suit any client's requirements. The fourth plate we have here is a steer horn plate that I believe Graham has already spoken about. Again, it is using the Isaac, the new Isaac Kid bar. Same construction, except for the steer horn shape, which offers reduction in power costs because we have reduced the freeboard between the liquor line and the hanger bar. It is also fitted with polypropylene hinge type edge strips. Over here, if we can see this, and hopefully we can, uh, I realize it is night time. This is an example of 2D barcode marking, which uh, notify or has the plate serial number in laser etched onto the blade, 2D barcode and also a human readable. That enables better tracking of the plates through in the, throughout the refinery. Uh, RFID systems are also used here by GT to track our development plates. I have an example of an RFID tag here. You can see the shape, you can see the housing, and you can see this is typically the hole machined in the plate. The RFID tag is simply pushed into the hole, becoming very secure. The RFID tag housing is specifically designed to give it a good life expectancy in the tank house environment. Just behind us here, we can see an example of a plate being in service and again, I apologise, it's probably hard to see, but this is an RFID tag that has been in service here at CRL Refinery for many years. 
it is still in good order, well attached to the plate. The other point to notice here, when we look across this selection of plates, is the different options that are offered. So we have a variation of window sizes, lengths, heights, centers, as well as a variation of li lifting lugs. All of these can be offered. And um, basically, the idea is to suit the customer requirements. We'll probably now uh, move into the machine bay. But first of all, before we do that, just like to talk about some of the machine variations that are available and the fact that our machinery is designed and built in collaboration with our partners, Mesco in Japan. The designs vary to include traditional linear type cathode stripping machines with speeds from 250 plate per hour to 600 plate per hour. Also includes the latest automatic robotic cathode stripping machines with speeds from 120 plates to 500 plates per hour. And the robotic cathode stripping machines also handle split sheet copper deposits as well as envelope copper deposits. The main point of difference for the Isaac Kid robotic cathode stripping machine is the fact that we are using the robot and the uh, patented stripping wedge design to completely remove the cathode deposit from the cathode plate. By using, or the use of the uh, robotic wedge, we are not just using robots to pick and place plates within the machinery and then using traditional stripping methods such as stripping knives and hydraulic cylinders. Using the robots and the wedge, really offers many advantages. It offers more reliable stripping of the copper deposit. It offers less human intervention, obviously giving better safety and less manual handling issues in the stripping area. Uh, examples of GT as a kid robotic stripping can easily be viewed online with a simple Google search, as a kid robotic stripping and the videos you will find there will clearly explain the stripping process that we use. Some of the other machines that are available from Isaac Kid are semi-automatic pivot arm machines with uh, throughput capacity of 70 to 90 plates per hour. Um, they've been very popular in Australian, African and Indonesian markets with now some 25 units installed and operating well. They're ideally suited for smaller smaller plants, uh, typically 15 to 30,000 ton per annum cathode production. Also we have anode scrap washing machines up to 500 plates per hour in both tunnel wash configuration as well as full face wash configuration. Uh, anode preparation machines up to 450 plates per hour, suiting all the requirements for weighing, pressing, milling and spacing of the product. Uh, as, we, as we enter into the machine bay here, we will see at CRL there is two cathode stripping machines that are installed. They are traditional linear type machines rated at 600 plates per hour. So they are a six second time cycle. They have been installed and in continuous operation here for now just on 20 years. In that time, that means each stripping machine processes approximately 1.2 million plates per year. So if we think about that, each stripping machine has now processed almost 24 million plates in its current lifetime. As we walk through, you will probably notice some of the equipment is still original. Uh, examples would be servo motor drives, gearboxes, hydraulic drives, 
conveyor gearboxes. Also in this area, you can see examples of valve stands. Uh, they still have the original paintwork on them, so they have been in operation for 20 years without failures. This is a testament to GT's design and robustness of the machines. You can see we are currently at the Western Stripping Machine, a traditional linear type machine. We will now move on to the Eastern Cathode Stripping Machine. Basically at TRL, the two stripping machines are doing similar functions. The reason for coming here was to show you in this position, these are the RFID tag readers. So when the plates are passing here, this is the reader that will pick up the tag information, convey information to the control system based above, which in turn will send it back to the business systems. Uh, the RFID tag system can also be used to automatically reject plates, particularly uh, development plates, if we want to measure them and check them. So when the plate passes the reader, the signal is sent to the control system. It then goes back to the stripping machine PLC, and then the plate is automatically passed through to the reject station, where it will be rejected onto the reject conveyor ready for removal later. In this position, you may be able to see another RFID tag reader and RFID control unit. This reader is specifically measuring the tag numbers for reject plates. As we move on now through the machine bay, you can see some examples down here of the finished cathode pro product sitting on the walking beams of the cathode stripper. These bundles are now weighed, labelled, strapped, and as you see them sitting on the conveyor, they are ready for shipment. We'll now move through further into the machine bay. This area through here is where our anode product enters the tank house. Below us here is a live storage area. The anodes will pass underneath us here. They will pass through at the lower level. And directly ahead of me here, you can see where the anodes are lifted up to the tank house cell level and passed through for the cranes to pick up. We then move over to the anode scrap washing machine. Here we have a good example of a 500 plate or 500 plate per hour anode scrap washing machine. It is a full face wash machine. The point to note here is this angled section in the wash chamber. The purpose of this is for any weak or falling scrap that may fall inside the wash chamber. If it does, it will fall down onto this angled surface inside, slide down into a catchment area, and the machine can continue to operate without any immediate stoppages. The advantage of this is less downtime and then simply at the end of the shift, the doors down here can be opened up. I can show you an example of that. The doors are simply opened up now. Any fallen scrap will be sitting in this part of the wash chamber. You can see it as well clear of the conveyors. It can be removed and taken away. Again, this anode scrap washing machine has been in continuous operation here for 20 years. Um, 
Typically, it will operate around about 750,000 pieces of scrap per year, which means in its life, it's now processed in the vicinity of 14, uh, 14 million pieces of scrap in its lifetime. Um, I think that's probably most of what we've got tonight. Um, I think I've probably also gone over time, but uh, for now, I hope that everyone has enjoyed this uh, brief presentation and looked through CRL's refinery. As I said before, it's an absolute great example for the use of Isaac Kid technology, the cathode plates, and Isaac Kid machinery. Back to you, Graham, for the next session. Thank you very much. A very informative overview of the refinery and of the electrode handling system. And I just I'd like to finish, I suppose, by showing uh, an example of our latest uh, electrode handling system using the robotic stripping that Noel mentioned. We uh, incorporated the robots with the patented uh, wedge system. At the, you can see that, uh, it, and it's actually the wedge stripping the copper from the stainless steel blades. And by using the wedges, we're minimising the mechanical impacts of the stripping process on the stainless steel blade of the cathode plate, which will give us the longest possible life of the stainless steel blade and thereby improving the efficiency of the operation. Uh, the video you're watching is from a, uh, an operation that is uh, running in Chile and uh, Noel was part of the commissioning team. Thank you very much.